Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing a family recipe of making borscht and also would like to tell you why in Russia borscht is such a staple dish. And before we start making our borscht, I want to share some interesting facts with you. Fact number one, although in English borscht spelled with a letter T at the end, there is no letter T in Russian pronunciation, it's pronounced borscht. And it comes from two different words, which uh, first word is bor or bor, which means burgundy color, bori, and also another name for beets, which means buryak. And the second word is shi, which is practically cabbage soup. So here you go, it's a deep red color cabbage soup. Fact number two, borscht actually tastes better next day. So in Russia, we had a saying, if you want to eat tomorrow's borscht, come tomorrow. And fact number three, in the old Russia, a future bride will be tested by a future mother-in-law on how she makes borscht. So here you go, guys. A way to man's heart is through borscht. And borscht is not popular just in Russia. It is one of the favorite soups in Ukraine and also in some Eastern European countries. Borscht can be made completely vegetarian for Lent, for example, but today I'm making a very traditional recipe with a beef stock. Therefore, we're going to need some good meat. And I'm going to be using some beef chanks, some oxtails, and for the meat, I'm going to be using a nice lean piece of sirloin. Making flavorful beef stock is important for this dish, so therefore we're going to need some flavorings. We're going to need one onion, one parsnip, one carrot, one stalk of celery, and I usually make my own little spice pack, and I have some spices like bay leaves, I have some coriander seeds, some black pepper, and a little bit of parsley, and I use these little pouches for the tea. I forgot where I bought them, but they actually come very useful, so I just stuff all my dry spices in there, therefore it would be so much easier to fish that little pack out when the stock is done. And there is no need to peel any of the vegetables, because they are going to be discarded. You're also going to need some big stock pot, and I think mine is about eight and a half quarts. I mean, it's really big, guys. I rarely use it, except for this dish. So we're going to put all our meat on the bottom of the pot, and we're going to put all our veggies. And as I told you, you don't need to peel them, because after the stock is done, we're just going to discard the vegetables. Uh, so they're, they're there for just flavoring. And we're going to add maybe 5 quarts of um, cold water in that pot. And we're going to put the pot on the stove to boil. And these little guys, I have actually quite a collection of them. They're called steam escapers. So what you do, you clip them onto the pot and then you put your lid over them and your steam escapes. And here's an important step in making nice and clear beef stock. You guys need to catch the moment when this foam appears on top of your beef stock and you need to discard it. And when it starts to boil, you just close your lid and we're going to boil it for about an hour. Now let's talk about the vegetables that actually go into making borscht. We're of course going to need some beets and we're going to need the beets with the beet greens because we're going to use both. We're going to need one head of green cabbage. We're also going to need two carrots, one parsnip, four potatoes and two garlic cloves. As far as the fresh herbs, we're going to need just the celery greens, we're going to need one bunch of parsley and one bunch of dill. We're also going to need salt and pepper to taste and just for a little spice, I'm going to add one red chili pepper. Choosing your beets for borscht is very important. They have to be really deep red and also inside. And, of course, we're going to peel our beets and we're going to save the greens for later. So just peel your beets and I'm using the gloves because, guys, these guys stain your hands like there's no tomorrow. You're going to be scrubbing your hands after that. So make sure you use gloves. 
Now let's check on our beef stock and it's been about an hour of simmering time so we're just gonna discard all the vegetables that we put in there for flavoring and we're gonna leave the meat inside because the meat is not done it will still be cooking as our soup gonna be cooking at this point we're gonna load our beets in our beef stock and we're gonna wait for them to cook just close the lid and simmer it for about 30-35 minutes as you can see guys I have all my vegetables peeled and we're also gonna keep our peeled potatoes in water so they don't get browned as far as the carrots and the parsnip we're just gonna grate them on the grater parsnip adds such a nice flavor to borscht so I always prefer to add it after 30-35 minutes of simmering time we have to remove our bones because they already done the job of flavoring our beef stock and guys those are kind of special and it's a delicacy in some countries and I will show you how to eat them actually quite a treat and here you go guys there's a bonus dish in making our borscht which is a bone marrow and this dish is quite a delicacy and can be enjoyed with just a pinch of fleur de sol which is a salt that is hand-picked in France and you just sprinkle these guys with salt and using a small fork you enjoy the marrow our beef stock is completely done it has a slightly pinkish color because we dropped the beets in there so at this point guys you can take out all the meat and check on your beets if they're ready take them out and we're gonna continue making our borscht and of course to make your beef stock clear and beautiful we need to strain it just to get rid of all this gunk in it then return it back to the pot and of course I wash the pot and we're gonna put it on a slow simmer and then we're gonna start loading our vegetables and our carrots and parsnips are going in there first then we need to chop just the stalks from the beet greens and we're gonna chop them finely and those are gonna go in the soup too Including beet greens in the borscht will add more to the color of it so it's going to make it even more red and also will complement the taste. And as far as the greens we need to chop those too and we're going to save them for later. We also going to need to chop one head of cabbage and we might not need the whole head but make sure you have plenty so you can add as much as you need to the soup and I'm using this tool guys I got it in Russia and that's what they use to chop the cabbage but you can just use the knife and if you have some cabbage left so what just make a coleslaw Add your beet stocks to the soup and also going to add one hot pepper and guys we're just going to simmer it for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we need to take that pepper out otherwise your soup is going to be too hot. Next potatoes are going to go in and did you guys know that before um, Peter the Great in Russia they didn't have potatoes because Peter the Great is the one that brought them from Holland so but they were making borscht anyway and instead of potatoes they were using either beans or some kind of grains like buckwheat and um, barley add your potatoes in and then we'll simmer it for another 10 minutes and at this point guys you need to take that pepper out because one time I left it in there and the soup came out to be very hot and now we're gonna drop our beet greens to the soup and we're gonna chop all our fresh herbs for later here I have just the greens from the celery I'm gonna chop them really finely I'm also gonna chop one bunch of fresh parsley and one bunch of fresh dill but it's up to you guys you can add, add or subtract uh, the herbs you don't like in your soups and um, just add the ones you like but those are gonna go in the soup at the very end 
All our meats we've taken out from our beef stock are cool enough to handle. And in borscht, I'm going to use only sirloin, guys. And I'm going to slice it into little cubes. And the rest of the meat you can either snack on or discard it because they already served their purpose of flavoring our beef stock. And here is the secret, guys, of making borscht very red. These beets that we cooked, uh, we need to grate them. And we also going to add uh, freshly squeezed garlic to them. And we're going to add two tablespoons of just white vinegar. And that's going to keep our color and um, prevent our soup from going from very deep red to kind of pinkish red. And guys, hang in there because we're almost at the finishing steps of our making our borscht. So we're going to drop our meat in there. And we're also going to drop the cabbage. And here's the little trick, guys. You need to add enough cabbage so your soup is somewhat uh, thick, but not thick enough so you don't have enough broth in it. Because you have to be able to enjoy the veggies and the broth in your borscht so add just enough cabbage so you can move the spoon around in it when our cabbage is al dente we're gonna add our beets and guys here's a very important step when you add the beets and you add your fresh herbs at this point you need to turn your heat completely off and you're gonna close the lid and you will not open it for 10 minutes after 10 minutes we're gonna give it a taste and as you guys can see everything has settled down in there and the color of the borscht is very bright red so at this point we're gonna flavor our borscht and just add the salt and the pepper to taste and it's ready guys for Russian person making borscht is like a secret ritual so if at any point of this video you guys can hear a choir singing or a bird singing we must have done something right here and traditionally borscht is served with just the slices of fresh garlic and some fresh herbs and of course the sour cream and guys this is the most amazing borscht you can ever try and to make it even more Russian, I'm going to serve it with this brown bread or black bread. And um, there's another little uh, Russian uh, piece of uh, culture. Uh, we like to eat borscht with black bread and a little bit of um, that pork. Uh, it's kind of a cured pork. You put it on the black bread. And... Um, uh, you add also uh, some fresh slices of um, garlic on there and guys it's the most amazing taste a Russian person can experience or I would say a person who would like to experience Russian dishes can experience that with me there are different ways of cooking borscht in all different countries in ukraine for example they fry up all the vegetables and they add a tomato paste to it but this is how my family eat borscht and enjoy borscht it's a nice and clear taste nothing got fried there it's just vegetables and this beautiful beef stock that makes this borscht absolutely amazing I hope you guys loved this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.